Howdy all, this is Shane. Welcome to the In The Blues Tone podcast. Today we're going to be talking with Paul from DIY Guitar Pedals and his website is diyguitarpedals.com.au. He's also got a really cool YouTube channel called Chromesphere that I've learned so much from in building my own pedals. Paul is a bit of a guru when it comes to making his own effects pedals, helping others and also providing a really cool shop where people can buy parts which is where I get a lot of mine from so we're going to have a chat to Paul shortly and have a chat about the ins and outs of DIY pedal building and it should be a lot of fun all right so uh, welcome to the in the blues tone podcast Paul thanks for being one of uh one of the very few guests I've had <laughs> thanks for having me and <laughs> no worries I appreciate your time so you're a bit of a well you're my uh sort of like mentor when it comes to uh guitar pedal building now you've helped me out on a number of occasions so thank you so much for for all your help i just wanted to throw that in there <laughs> and uh yeah you've got a great youtube channel that um pretty much covers lots of topics for people wanting to get into diy pedals and you know where to start and all that kind of stuff and that just brings me to to i guess the first question i have is if you were starting from scratch again what would would be the steps that you would take i guess to to learn a little bit about um how to make pedals and, and just where to start in general? Um, I would definitely, um, I would definitely start with something as simple as possible. Um, the it, it sounds a bit funny, but the actual the effect is only half the thing that you have to learn to build. You know, like you got to you got to put it inside an enclosure, you got to wire it up, and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and and that's something that you need to learn to do. So if you use a simple effect. It's uh, getting a simple effect going is 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 easy. So you can you can you can get the effect going, and then you can focus on how to how to wire it up inside uh, the enclosure because because building the effect is it, there's a lot to learn besides just building the actual effect. And if you go for something like a like a uh, you know like an eight step phaser or something like that, something complicated, you're not. It's just it's gonna it's gonna fail and um, I mean, I just talk from personal experience. But if I if I take on a new a new hobby and I take on something complicated and inevitably fail, I just can't. I just it turns me off the hobby. Um, so I, 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 the the best advice I could probably give is is to start simple. Yeah, and I, I actually did exactly what you're talking about. I, I started with something that I was I was given to do a bit of a demo and a video on, but it was way over my head. I didn't know how to solder properly. I didn't have the proper tools, which makes a huge difference. <laughs> Just <laughs> even the wire strippers. Like it, I got a set of those the other week and, well, life's a lot easier now than trying to use the pliers that I had, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely, um, there's, a, there's a lot to learn in terms of uh, yeah, how it all fits together, how to solder properly, making, and as you've helped me with troubleshooting and, and not trying to go too too deep too soon you know i built my first one i was like oh this is going to be easy and then i i failed the next few that were way too complicated so yeah it's good you, you seem to have quite a lot of basic kits which they've all worked out fine so far for me yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's exactly what they're meant for that's exactly that's the, the their exact purpose and it's probably a reason why they're, they're they're relatively popular um because i mean i have people ask me all the time um, you know, look, I want to, I want to start a project. What should I start? I say, look, just go for one of the simple, the simple, you know, like the 10 minute, um, dirt and boost or the 10 minute buffer or the seven minute fuzz, because they're just so easy to put together. It's ridiculous. You just can't, it's like the seven minute fuzz has got five components on it. <laughs> yeah, got, it's great. You, you've only, you've only got a very small amount of solder joints that, that, um, you have to get right. See, that's the other thing too, with the complicated effect, you've just got an ocean of solder points and the more solder points you have the more room for error there is so you know that's that's why it's um that's why it's important to go for something simple small you know like like those like those kits that i have and and yeah and, and then and then they build it and they come back and they say i got it working oh uh, you know it was great you know and, and i also have people say i tried like i said before i tried something more complicated and and it just failed and you know and but now i've tried yours and it's working again it's got it's got it's given me the confidence to go into something that's a little bit more, a little bit harder, and that's and that's what you got to do. You got to start. I, I reckon you got to start with the simple stuff and work your way up. I mean, I didn't tackle the first. The first advanced build I tackled was 
uh, small stone, um, which it nearly killed me, that thing, because I just had so many problems with it. But that was number 12, you know, so, yeah, that was my yeah, 12th yeah. build. Yeah, yeah. You try that at the start. <laughs> you just, just it's, it's, yeah. I put my two <laughs> failed uh, Maxon pedals, aside, like the Maxon sort of clones, aside for about another, I'll, I'll look at them again in about another six months once I've done a few more easy ones, and then I'll probably, a light bulb will go off and I'll go, oh, that's, yeah, uh, that's where I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Because I guess yeah. the problem, uh, not the problem, but part of the the issue I think for me starting fresh was like knowing the knowing how to take um, read the values of the resistors and all that kind of stuff, you know. And they look so similar that it's really easy to make a mistake. I think even if yeah. you think you know which ones, which it's it's quite and, easy to to make those mistakes there. Yeah, and like, um, like we spoke about the other day, you can act, some of the resistors you can read both ways, you know, so which just makes it a little bit more confusing. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'd recommend for, for even if you're just going to build a couple of pedals, you go if you have a plan, I'm going to build a few pedals. Yep. I'd recommend just getting the cheapest multimeter that you can find, just just so you can confirm that those those values are right. Because you know, I mean, if you put the wrong value in. You, you just don't know what's going to happen with the circuit, you know, if you've stuffed up the values. So it's important to get them in, in right. So I just buy the cheapest multimeter that you can get, I, I reckon, if you, you know, for people who are starting out. Yeah, cool. Are there any to- other tools that people might overlook um, when they first start to do this? Say they've got a, you know, a, oh, they might not even have a wire stripper, but just a pair of pliers and a soldering iron. What, what else would you recommend that people have to make just to make life easier when they're starting out? You don't really, you don't really need that much. Like that's that's the thing. Like um, when when you, I mean, if you don't have any electronic stuff, you're going to have to spend a bit of money. Obviously, I mean, you need a soldering iron. You can't build a pedal without a soldering iron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and solder, of course. Um, and it, the, the the list is actually really basic. I've actually got a video in my upload queue mm-hmm. about um, a minimalist tool set is what it's called. So the the absolute minimum that you need. You don't. You don't even need a drill because, like as you probably know, you can buy the, the enclosures pre-drilled, yeah. pre-painted as well. You don't even need to, don't need to paint them. I, I bought a drill and all that before I found that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you pay a little bit extra because I mean, you're paying for the service, obviously, yeah, but yeah. Um, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a drill press you know, on your first on your first pedal because you, you can get that stuff already done, mm-hmm. you know, so, and the painting as well. I find the the drilling's probably the thing that I've butchered the most um, going into it. I, I just off center, you know, I, I, what I think is a straight line ends up being you know a, enough out that it just it just looks wrong. You know, like yeah. I, that's that's been my challenge. I'm not really a, a like a a power tools kind of guy. I've used them in the past, but not for a long time. So my IT hands aren't as uh, competent with the uh, with the tools as I'd like, but. Yeah, that that's the thing. I that's the one thing now that I make sure of before I do anything is are all these line, are all these holes in the in the right place, you know, before yeah. I, I actually go to drill it. So that's uh, that was an overlooked part of it for me, I think. And also making sure if you're using a particular type of um, uh, you know control or knob on the top that it actually fits with where you drill all the rest of the holes. I made that mistake as well. So I probably wasted 50 or 60 bucks worth of cases in the first <laughs> first couple of weeks. It was painful. <laughs> <laughs> or enclosures, sorry. Yeah, it was it was painful stuff. My my first um my first pedal was a um MPM booster, just a just a single transistor booster. Mm-hmm. Um and I I'd, I'd planned to have a battery in it and I, like this this circuit was so small and I was amazed that I somehow managed to just the orientation of where all the parts, you know, where, you know the, the jacks and the, and the knobs and the DC jack and the yep. stop switch. I, I just couldn't fit a battery in there no matter which way I tried to get in there. <laughs> I just, you know, like I just, yeah, yeah. I don't think I even put much thought into where I was actually drilling, you know, until later and you're like, oh, that's why you need to pay attention where the, yeah. where the holes are going. <laughs> I, I've got a pretty cool template that I found online and I've, I've sort of modified it a little bit just for the parts that I've got. Um, the first time I, I put the LED light way too close to the to the jack. So not only was it really hard to just fit them both together, it was um, I had to cut the plastic washer around with scissors to get the actual... Anyway, it was a mess. I had them just way too close to each other and the, 
the, the washer, like the um, the nut or the bolt was right next to the, the LED, like right next to it. There was no gap. It was super tight. So, yeah, I've yeah. Learned, yeah. I, I've, I think the template I'm using now is pretty, pretty cool. I just modified one slightly. Templates help immensely, even if, um, e- even if it's not what you like. If you're building a pedal that's got four knobs on it mm-hmm. and you're, um, uh, and yours has got five or whatever. You just use like if you if you're putting it inside a 1590B enclosure, um, which um, is you know like a, it's pretty standard size enclosure that you get with commercial pedals. Um, if you're putting inside that, you can just use a template for a 1590B and then you know like put your um, put an extra knob on pretty much. Just but you use that for the base, you yeah, know, for yeah. where you're drilling and everything. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm.